Continuing our reading in Abraham Hannibal and the Raiders of the Sands by Francis Summers Cox. This is chapter 25, The Lily Flower Flag. The days passed. Abraham got a stick and scratched a mark on it for each day, just as he had done once before on a journey long ago in a far-off land. The nanny goats got quite used to being milked, though a liquid diet left the children permanently hungry. Soon they began to brave the blood-stained cottage to use the pots for making soft cheese. Abraham ripped his robe into pieces to use as cheesecloth and lived in his undershorts. Neither Abraham nor Naganga ever felt quite at ease. They would look anxiously out where the little harbor's mouth led to the open sea, not knowing whether to hope for a ship or not. Three times they saw ships sail past, but they never changed course to come into the harbor. The children built themselves a little round hut of sticks and grass, and when they had done that, spent the time telling each other tales of their past lives, or after a careful check out to the sea, splashing in the shallow water near the beach. Neither of them ever tried to swim out of their depths. Deep water held too many memories, especially for Abraham. And every night, just as the desert, just as in the desert, just as on the ship, Abraham repeated to himself like a magic charm the words of his message to the Sun King. Then one day, day 37 since the shipwreck it was by Abraham's stick, a ship did change course. The children took no chances. They had already found a perfect lookout spot, a huge cracked rock with bushes growing out of the cracks high up on the slope overlooking the little harbor. They could stand behind it, shaded and hidden, and peer down onto the beach and the whole harbor, and that was what they did now. The ship was a big one, almost too big, big for the tiny harbor, but it passed in through the narrow entrance skillfully. She was the biggest ship the children had ever seen, with two masts and at least ten sails, and shiny cannons poking out of her sides. As she came closer, they could see that she had some kind of battering. There were broken stumps of a third mast, and the sails and rigging looked torn and untidy. But then neither of them knew much about ships. Is it a slave ship? asked Naganga. I think the killers will come in a slave ship. I wish I knew, whispered Abraham, not knowing why he was whispering, since the ship was far out of earshot. But it looks quite different from Master Ahmet's one. I wonder if it's Frankish. That would be the best thing. The Franks would never take a Christian as a slave. There was a name written on the ship's side, but it was in, was very far away. In any case, Abraham had never learnt any of the Frankish or Arabic alphabet. Don't forget, I'm not a Christian, pointed out Naganga. You're with me. You can become a Christian, just like my mother after she was captured. There was a distinct clank and rattle and splash of the anchor being anchor chain being lowered. The big ship was still quite far out, but it had come as near to shore as it dared. And then as Abraham squinted at every corner of the ship, desperate for clues, a great flood of relief swept right through him. He gave a loud whoop of joy, pulled Naganga out from behind the rock with both hands, and whirled her round, chanting at the top of his voice, The lily flower! The lily flower! The lily flower! The two of them whirled round and round until they both collapsed, breathless on the grass. The goats that had been grazing nearby in amazement stared. The Ganga was completely bewildered too. What happened, Abraham? What are you saying? Look, there, at the back of the ship, the, 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 what do you call it, the, the flag! It's the lily flower of France. Do you remember I, I told you about Dr. Ponset and the, the Sun King? It's their country. This ship will take us to France, to the palace of the Sun King. I'm going to deliver my message at last. The Sun King is really going to see that the youth of Ethiopia are the best in the world, second to nobody. Abraham knelt up and grabbed Naganga by the shoulders, shouting into her face, Just think, Naganga, just think. He'll be standing there. The sun king will be standing there in his palace in a huge hall with a hundred mirrors 
and each mirror is as tall as a tree. There are enormous windows that look out over the palace gardens. There are stone images of animals and men out there spouting water high into the air and trees and bushes cut into amazing shapes. And I'm in a carriage with wheels. It's pulled by horses as fast as the wind. And I'm riding up the road through the gardens to the king's, the, the sun king's palace. You're with me, of course. So, so we're, ne we're both in the carriage, galloping nearer and nearer. And when we get there, the servants help us to climb out of the carriage. And there's music, drums, and trumpets to welcome us. And the servants l uh, lead us up a gigantic staircase with a wonderful, wonderful pictures painted on all the walls and the ceiling. And the servants will lead us into this enormous hall. And there's the Sun King standing up on a platform, standing next to his huge, fancy golden chair. He's wearing a bushy white wig, just like Dr. Ponset, and shining clothes full of silver and gold thread, and a great cloak trimmed with fur. His crown's on the table next to him, and Dr. Ponset is there, smiling all over his face because he's so pleased to see that we've arrived. I've arrived at last, and, and then I'll bow like a real Frank. Like, like this. Abraham jumped to his feet, bowed low as the doctor had taught him all those months before, and shouted out that at the top of his voice, The emperor of Ethiopia sends brotherly greetings to the king of the Franks. My name is Abraham, and my father is a noble lord of Africa. He pointed and pulled Naganga to her feet. Come on, Naganga, let's go down and greet them. And hand in hand, the two children raced down the hillside to the beach and waited for the Sun King's sailors. And that's the end of chapter 25.